Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, May 28th, and I'm here with our weekly look at the Pioneer and Modern metagames. And you've probably noticed that there's been a lack of League Dump videos lately, and part of that is I'm just not happy with how the videos were coming out. They were a little repetitive, and I just don't think there was a whole lot of good information in there. So I'm revisiting how I want to handle that type of information. In the meantime, though, these weekly metagame uh, reviews, I think, have proven to turn out pretty well, and I, I kind of like the ongoing uh, e evolution of what's happening in the formats. Uh, as you are probably aware, there has been an announcement that there will be a ban and restriction announcement next Monday, um, and that it doesn't directly affect the two formats we look at, Pioneer and Modern. However, they said it's going to be for Historic and Standard. However, they are also going to be addressing the Companion Mechanic. And my guess here is this is going to be a change in how the mechanic works. I've seen a bunch of different ideas on what the change might be. They all have one thing in common, and that's you would no longer be able to cast the companion from your sideboard. You would have to somehow get the card into your hand first. And I've seen a variety of suggestions on how that could be. It could be anything from at the start of the game, you just swap it for a card that was in your opening seven or six or whatever and put one of the cards from your hand on the bottom of your library. So like a second mulligan kind of thing. Um, another was you just skip a draw step and put the card into your hand instead of drawing a card out of your library. And the third I've, I've heard, which might end up being the one, we'll see, is for three generic mana at sorcery speed, you take the card out of your sideboard, put it in your hand. Any of these are possible or something completely different. Who knows? But I do feel that after next Monday, the companion mechanic will no longer be as strong. And so what I'm going to do is kind of do a metagame review of what happened during the the companion era and where we go from there so watch for that next week i'll have uh some nice little line charts uh to see you know what decks kind of have evolved over this what is it six week span has it really only been set maybe seven weeks that companions have been legal it feels so much longer but it's been less than two months definitely so anyway, let's take a look at where things have gone. Uh, there have definitely been some uh, clarifications, let's say, in the metagames to the two formats. Uh, so first off, uh, Pioneer keeps shifting around. Uh, it doesn't happen as quickly as standard, but it definitely uh, goes through ebbs and flows and decks that are everywhere one week almost disappear the next. and then things sometimes come back and sometimes they don't. Modern is condensing a little bit, particularly up at the top. It still has the um, kind of the gamma distribution long tail thing going on, but it's much more condensed at the top now and drops off a little quicker. So, I mean, we saw almost the same number of decks last week as the week before, but there are a lot more one-ofs. And so I think Modern is starting to condense into a defined metagame. Companion usage in Pioneer did drop a little bit, and two primary reasons for that. Uh, one is that the Demir Inverter players have stopped using Yorion. Uh, almost, uh, probably 80 to 85% of the decks this week, uh, of the Demir Inverter decks this week, that uh, were not using a Companion. And... In the weeks prior, there had been a growing usage of Yorion in the Demir Inverter decks, and now that's pretty much gone away. I think they've decided that comboing off faster is better. Uh, also, it, mitigating that a little bit is the Lotus Breach players are starting to play Lurus more. Uh, it's not all of them. It's probably about around half 
but that is it is mitigating the numbers a little bit but it's still causing an overall drop in companion usage in Pioneer. Modern is pretty much stabilized in the low 70%. Uh, and we'll see from the uh, tier tables coming up that the top of the metagame is pretty much all companion decks with one exception. But the second tier is about half and half. And that's where uh, that companion usage drops off. All right, so let's take a look at Pioneer. Uh, the big thing to note here is Jeskai Luka dropped off its throne. It was the splash last week, and it's dropped down relatively significantly. Uh, probably only about as, a third as many decks appeared this week as last. And Burn and Inverter are back up at the top two slots, and pretty clearly so. I mean, you see from, from the numbers here, they effectively tied at the top of the metagame. And it's a big drop until the third deck in Lotus Breach. But we've got this kind of clump on... Uh, so Burn and Inverter, I would call the Tier 0 decks. That's what you're going to see the most often. And then Tier 1 here, we've got Lotus Breach. Sort of using Lurus, but it's a split. Uh, the Clone Tribal deck is really picking up steam. And it's really... Uh, it's optimized the deck quite a bit and it's doing pretty well blue white control has had a big resurgence last week uh, most of the decks are running yorion and yeah it was a good week for control heroic dropped a bit and then we saw luca here now in, dropping what in what i would call tier two um, that of course is going to change i'm sure uh, the nif to light decks Still in Pioneer, almost exclusively running Yorion. And Blue, White, and Soul uh, has made a resurgence. There were a couple of Jeskai lists that we'll see in a bit. But uh, in Soul had started out Blue-Red, then it went to Jeskai, and now the more effective version, at least over the last week, dropped the red, and it was just running Blue-White. Uh, the four-color version that was around for a while, I have not seen in weeks. Uh, the rest here, kind of tier three, we've got hardened scales still hanging around. Orzov Auras made a little bit of a, a resurgence. Hadn't seen it last week. Uh, and here's the Jeskai and Soul. So if you put the two in Soul decks together, that's three here from Jeskai, and we've got what seven from Blue White. So that's kind of in that tier one fringe. Uh, a little split on the strategies whether you see Galvanic Blast or not, and that's the primary red card in the deck. And then Esper Control uh, and Sultai Delirium pulling up here. The original Jeskai Fires Planeswalkers deck that does not use a companion, that one made a little bit of resurgence. There were a couple of good results from that deck last week. And then your one of uh, The big drop-off this week is Mono White Devotion. Uh, whether it's Splashing Blue which only appeared once, or Splashing Black, which didn't appear at all, um, that deck dropped precipitously off the top of the metagame. And don't be surprised if you don't see it a whole lot. Um, we'll see what happens, but that was that was a big fall. Uh, the other deck that kind of disappeared this past week was Mono Red Aggro, the Obosh build. Did not see one. So interesting little shifts here in the metagame. I think in Soul it's kind of taken back a little bit of that aggressive bent. And then Burn may have pushed Mono Red Aggro out of the format. It's just a more effective deck. All right, let's go on to Modern. Let's see what's happened there. So we've got now in Modern a clear 1 and 2 for the most effective decks. And Black Red Prowess, which basically didn't exist three weeks ago... Uh, showed up barely two weeks ago last week had gotten all the way up to number four or num number two right and now it's number one it's it is the aggro deck of choice and it is doing very very well uh, the hand disruption that you get from uh, the thought seizes and the inquisitions paired with the red prowess shell has proven to be a very effective innovation and 
it'll be interesting to see how things adjust. Eldrazi Tron had a really good week. Moved back up into number two, and it's it is the mid range deck of choice right now, I think, in the metagame. Because Jund, our number three and was number one last week, has kind of dropped that med that mid range moniker now that it's running Lurus, and it's a little bit more of an aggressive deck. It's it's not as aggressive as Black Red Prowess, obviously, but it's not uh, not presenting the large threats that it used to in Liliana and Bloodbraid and Kalidus and cards like that. You just don't see them in the deck anymore. So Jund is a different beast now. It's still good, obviously. And in fact, given the metagame, it might even be a little better than traditional Jund ever was. Uh, or has been for quite a while. Let's put it that way. Uh, the control deck of choice now has turned into Rug Scapeshift. Uh, this is the Titanless build, the traditional uh, I'm going to kill you with uh, with the Volcano. The name, for whatever reason, the name escaped me right now. Uh, but uh, that or Field of the Dead. And then it's a control deck on top of that. And it's done very well recently. Uh, it was kind of good to see that deck back in the metagame. Uh, Burn, still hanging around as usual. Boggles had a great week. And I think Boggles is really well positioned right now with with the Liliana disappearance from Jund. Um, and that boogeyman, that, that deck that destroyed Boggles. Boggles had a horrible matchup against traditional Jund. And it's just not the same against the new one. So uh, interesting to see how this is risen up and to be honest I didn't think I would ever see Boggles on the first page of the tier decks and frankly as a former Boggles player kind of like it seeing it uh, Tron here right below not the greatest of weeks from Tron and interestingly it's almost exclusively now Gigantha builds I think there was one result that was not so you know the little the little shifts as decks adapt to what's going on around them that extra five five and some of these tron builds are running golos and being able to tap gigantha for golos mana can sometimes get a couple of those huge tron threats that we're used to seeing out in play in one turn and that that's going to win a game for you gruel monster still hanging around right around here in the fringe of tier two uh, or t I don't know if we call Prowess and Tron Tier 0 and these other six decks here Tier 1, however you want to do it. But it's in that next tier, right at the right at the fringe. Um, it's the bigger aggro deck, not quite as fast as Prowess, but still very strong. And if I had to pick a deck right now to play in the format, it's that one. It just kind of fits my style. And the next level here, and you'll see a drop-off as we go from 10 down to 8. A little bit of a drop, and now we're starting to hit that that uh, tail that Modern is famous for. Um, Devoted Devastation, still here, still doing well. Niv to Light, uh, and I still find this fascinating, that in Modern, Gigantha is the companion of choice, but in Pioneer, it's Yorion. And the deck is trying to do basically the same thing in both both formats and it just fascinates me how uh, the construction in the card pool causes you to choose a different companion and as you see here speaking of companions you see half these decks on this page don't use them ad nauseum uh, the combo deck of choice I think I guess you called devoted devastation a combo deck but ad nauseum is a more pure combo dredge here Still hanging around, despite all the Lurus decks, Dredge still does all right. And uh, if you, you know, if it manages to just dodge the graveyard hate, or somebody doesn't draw their sideboard cards, Dredge is going to steal matches. Hardened Scales still hanging around here with the Lurus, the Electro Balance deck doing pretty well. Amulet Titan dropped a bit, and as did Azorius Control. And I think the, the reason why you see both of these decks drop is the Valakut, and I remembered the name, hey, the Valakut deck of choice has become Rug Scapeshift, and the Control deck of choice has become Rug Scapeshift. So both of the players of these decks may have sh swift, sorry, switched over to Rug Scapeshift, and that's 
seeing this uh, rise of that deck and the fall of these two, similar to how we saw Bant Snowblade kind of disappear and Bant Snow Control take over. And now that those two decks are have almost disappeared. So interesting little shifts here. I, I like watching this evolve. And the rest, speaking of snow control, there's a four color version here. We did see two, honest to goodness, Bant Snowblade decks that were actually running Stoneforge Mystic. Um, Mill showed up a couple of times, surprisingly. I think it was the same player, once in a preliminary and once in a challenge. Uh, the Gyruda Titan deck still showing occasional results. This deck fascinates me, and I might try building it uh, just to see how it works. Uh, Eurosa kind of dropping out of the format here. Urza, I don't think, is a very good card in the format right now. And I think that's partly because it doesn't really fit any of the companion structures very well. Um, highlights here in the one-ofs. Uh, the Boros Hammer deck, Dice Factory showed up again. I haven't seen that deck in quite a while. And the new Umbral Mantle combo with um, Birds of Paradise and Zerda uh, making infinitely large Birds of Paradise and attacking in the air. Uh, just kind of a bunch, a smattering of different things here, as you tend to see in Modern. Decks that disappeared this week. Boros Blitz, it's gone. Uh, Black Red Prowess is definitely proved to be the better version. And all the Boros players are no longer splashing white, and they're now splashing black. Uh, Bant Snow Control, that one was gone. We saw a couple of Snowblade, but I think the Control players have pretty much all shifted over to Rug Scapeshift. So interesting to see that Control metagame figuring out what's the best build if I want to control the game and win that way. Wh where do I go? So that's about it this week. Uh, thanks for hanging around. And yeah, as I mentioned, some changes here. I'm I'm kind of mentally, I think, shifting this channel into a, uh, a weekly podcast of sorts where I look at the modern and pioneer metagames, how they evolve, etc. And next week, definitely... Given the BNR announcement and what comes from that, I will probably have a retrospective on the unfettered companion era and how these two formats handled it, and and a little bit of how the other formats uh, responded and the impact companions had on those formats. So that's about it for today. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like and subscribe. Thanks a ton for hanging out with me and watching. And if you want to know when that next video is coming up, do hit that notification bell. And that's about it for now. Thanks a bunch. Stay safe out there, and we will talk to you next week.